well, I uh, just wanted to show one thing today that isn't going to take very long at all. Um, really, the main thing is under the modeling menu, um, generate get brush. That's the main thing you're going to want to remember. And let me show you what it does. I'm going to show you the paint effect brush. So let's say um, you've got a you've got a ground plane that you want to put grass on or any kind of plants. Um, you might want to model those plants or you might want something faster and easier. So um, if you go to generate get brush these are paint effects brushes and there's a number of different categories here as you can see I'm gonna start with the um, grasses and I'm just gonna pick a grass here and basically I'm just gonna be painting grass into the scene so um, and it doesn't matter just whichever one looks aesthetically pleasing to what you want to what you want to accomplish but um, I don't know, I'll just try grass grass wind wide and then I'm gonna put this window in the other monitor here and so paint effects will now turn on a brush as you can see here and this works um, just the same as any other brush in Maya but what it's going to do is um, it's going to paint grass into the scene and it'll stick it on whatever geometry you're pointing at. Um, sometimes it's a better idea to do this in orthographic view than it is to do it in perspective view because you never know where it's going to wind up. And I can increase my brush size by holding down B and click dragging, same as before. So there it is with a bigger brush. Uh, and there's a lot of different um, attributes you can set on all of these. They all are going to have a gazillion different things. But um, mostly, um, there's like, I wanted to show a few things that you can animate. And this will respond to your um, tablets too, like with pressure and stuff if you have a drawing tablet. And I can smooth that a little bit. Sometimes there's an animate value on this. You can actually animate any of these values, but there's... I was looking for, like, wind sway, and yeah, I'm not finding it. Okay, maybe that one doesn't have it. Um, so I'm going to go back to my paint effects window, and we're going to put some flowers on this now. And I will put large daisies. I think large daisies has the wind sway, so we'll find out. Um, this is going to be, a, as always, a big increase in render time. And um, you don't want to go overboard with this. Very large daisies. Okay.
Okay, well, yesterday it had a uh, swaying mechanism to it, and today I'm not finding it. Wouldn't you know it? Um, but I think it's there somewhere. And you can make it look windy. Um, so, and even if you can't, um, you can always convert it to polygons and put a deformer on it. So to convert these, go to Modify, Convert, Paint Effects to Polygons. So you'll want to do this with most of your paint effects once you've got them the way you want them. And then if you want to, you can always do a nonlinear deformer if it doesn't have the um, deformer on there already. And let's do a... zero. The high bound doesn't really need to be any taller. I would actually recommend doing this bend with um, each individual flower, but for the purposes of what I'm doing, I'm just going to put it on all of them at once. So um, let's just set the low bound to zero, the high bound to something above the top of the flower by a little bit, and just move it down so that the base is a little bit beneath the flowers. And then I'm going to keyframe the curvature at frame one. That's just a right click set key on the curvature. Oh, okay, the grass is already swaying in the background. I guess it's on by default. I wonder if the daisies were on by default, too. Okay. But uh, if you have to animate it, you can just use that bend deformer just like that. It's basically the same thing. Um, minus the fact that you have to do it on every individual one. But we'll just put a little bend. Not too much. And I don't like the angle it's at. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that angle about 90 degrees. Gotta set the value and then the key. Set the value first and then set the key. Set cool, set, set keyframe, set keyframe, set keyframe. So these are going to be swaying contrary to each other now. Okay, so, um, The, uh, the paint effects by default seem to ignore your um, lighting and surfaces, as far as I can tell. And I don't know if that's a render setting I'm not seeing, but when you, mod when you go to Modify Convert to Polygons, it will, it will render normally. Does it lose the animation, though, I wonder? Yeah, looks like it does. 
No, no, it doesn't. Okay. The animation's still there. Cool. <clears throat> so, and I know that setting's in there somewhere that you can turn the animation on and off. So if you don't need any animation, don't use it. Don't go overboard with these um, because it can definitely clog your scene up. But what it's really, one of the things it's really good for is like covering up seams in your scene, um, like maybe where the tree roots meet the ground or something. If there's a seam there, just draw some grass in front of it and boom, you're good. So let me try if I can, I might not get this right away, but I'm going to do a new scene here and I am going to try to I'm going to try to do a displacement so I'm going to go to assign new material Lambert and we're going to call this material ground. Okay, and I have to look this up real quick. is the one I'm looking for, although this one looks rather sexy, I will come back to that one. Hey, Roger, this is look, a quick, a easy way to far. generate terrain. You couldn't find a stand in like any... Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike here at IMH Tutorials. Well guys, I'm going to address another subscriber request and today the request came from multiple people actually asking me how do you create a mountain terrain, right? Now there are a lot of ways to do that and I'm going to show you uh, two ways to do that. Uh, first we're going to start off uh, by creating a kind of a bumpy surface, not necessarily mountains but let's say hills and so forth, okay? So for that, we're going to go to our polygons menu. We're just going to take a simple plane, drag that out on the grid, and make sure you have enough uh, subdivisions to manipulate that. So we'll do 40 by 40. Okay. Now let's say you want to create some uh, some elevations, some hills, and so forth. All right. For that, we are going to go to our uh, let's see, where did he go? My deformation, right here. And here on the right, you got this soft modification tool, and we're going to click that. Now, when you click that, you get this arrow and you get this red area, right? The red area is the area that you will be manipulating when you drag up your arrow, okay? Now, the way to uh, scale that up or down is to hold down the B key on your keyboard and you can see that you get the circle and then if you left click and drag you can make that area bigger or smaller moving it left and right so we'll do let's say this okay and now simply just pull on the arrow click another area and start to pull that up now let's say we want to have some hills that are slightly bigger we're going to hold down our B key, drag that out a bit, click over here, click over there, maybe one there, 
and now if we hit Q on our keyboard and we hit 5 for shaded mode you see that you got some hills going on there right now if we just drag select this go to edit delete by type history there's your elevation right now like I said it's not necessarily mountains but this will give you uh, an opportunity to create some elevations okay now that's method number one we're gonna get rid of that we're gonna create a new plane so in our polygons menu we're gonna go to create polygon plane we'll drag out a new one and again give that let's say I don't know 50 by 50 and what we're gonna do now <coughs> is we're gonna download a digital elevation map right so we're gonna go to Google DEM file enter go to images and then you'll get files looking something like this okay now let's take one of these um, I don't know let's say we'll take this one right here okay now we're just gonna save that file it's a bit off it's not exactly synced, but that's fine. Right click on that, and we are going to uh, save that image as a DM file. I'll just save that on my desktop. And then I'm going to open Photoshop. File, open. And we'll take our DM file. There it is. Okay, and we're going to tweak that a little bit. <coughs> so we're going to go to image, mode, we're going to go to grayscale, like that. And let's see if we can do some adjustments. So we're going to go to brightness and contrast. And let's see if we can make the contrast a bit higher. That's about right. Okay, and we're going to go up to save file save as now make sure you do not save this as a tiff file when you do that it's it's not a computing all right with the uh, maya so i would advise a jpeg or a png uh, let's see um, yeah we'll just do a jpeg it's fine and we're going to save that as DEM file G JPEG, right? Save and OK. We're going to go back to Maya. Now there is our plane that we just created. OK. And then we're going to go to our surfaces menu. We're going to go to edit nerves, which sounds a bit weird, but that's what it is. And we're going to go down to Sculpt Geometry Fruit Tool and hit the option box and we're going to scroll down until we're in the import tab and we're going to import the file that we just um, saved so import go to our desktop uh, here's our DEM file JPEG we're going to open that and as you can see you got elevation going on there Okay. now it's not smoothed out yet but we have some options to tweak this because if we go up you have uh, let's see where is that maximum displacement so we can actually increase that so we'll just go back here in Q and we'll import it again so our displacement is at where do you go where do you go uh, edit herbs jump control option box there let's say 2.8 that's better we're going to go back to import we're going to select the same file which is this one here okay <coughs> that's a bit better okay like i said it's not uh, smoothed out yet but if we hit 3 on our keyboard and this is the terrain you're getting okay and what's neat about this is if you pick up 
the image files that are real and represent a certain uh, area, then you can simulate that. Okay. Now we're just going to create a quick light here, so you can kind of see the effect. So create light. Let's do a uh, directional light. Hit W, pull that up. <coughs> Excuse me. Hit E, rotate that, and we're going to hit seven on our keyboard, so we can see the effect of the light. And by moving that light, you can see the effect of your elevation. Well, that's all there's to it. Simple and easy way to create a mountain terrain. Okay, that's actually not what I wanted to show, but I'm glad I stumbled across it because it is something that is useful to know and definitely will give you some stuff to generate terrain with. Now, let me see if I can find the actual one. Okay, that's it for sure. I know that's it. All right, welcome we back to, to another tutorial minutes, in Maya. Let's, this is pretty much going to show the same thing, uh, only he's going to use a procedural to generate the um, displacement, and it's a little bit easier. And all I really need to do is find where he connects the displacement to the to the geometry. So here he's got the procedural. And where you see the white parts, it's going to go up, and where you see the black parts, it's going to go down. 50% gray stays in the middle. So I think either that or it's 0% black stays where it is, and everything else goes up. So, and then that becomes this when you use the displacement. So actually, yeah, it does look like black stays where it is, and everything else goes up. out of the way for a second. In my Creator 1, I have out more like 48 and maybe 48 there. And then take these up to just even 24 height and width. Alright. That gives us kind of kind of an even smooth mesh to start working with. And you can always raise these values up. And the more you raise these up, the higher, the more dense your mesh will become and the longer render times you will have. So there it is. So first thing we want to do is come over here and grab ourselves a blend, just a, a standard blend. I'm going to put that there. And actually, I'm going to go graph, clear graph, and I'm going to come into my materials. And where'd my blend go? All right, well, it disappeared. So I'm going to create a blend. It's going to be called blend two. And that should be cool. I'm going to go ahead and select my plane, right mouse click, sign existing material, and we'll go to that blend 2. Alright, and on this blend 2, we want to grab a 3D texture. That's going to be our displacement texture, which is going to be our crater material. And we're going to attach that. Just go ahead and right click on that, and then middle mouse button, drag and drop, and go to your default. And that puts it on the color channel. So now, we can kind of take a look at over here. I'm going to turn my lights off. Yeah, turn the lights off. Now I can see there's my, my material. That's my Creator 1 material. And here is my 3D sort of placement node. That's going to be able to establish the height and depth. All right. So first off, let's look at this. Um, this crater material and take this crater go ahead and select it in the hyper shade right there and we're gonna work with this because we want these channels to be white and the middle channel to be sort of a, a mid gray and this channel 3 to be a pure black and that's gonna give us the you know basic height and then the depth because we want black and white um, displacement so that just visualizes everything for us a little better so now that I got that I want to take a look at this node right here there it is and expand it a little bit right now it's it's only um, giving us a 3d representation of this little area so let's bring its scale up to say like 12 and I'll go 12 and I'm gonna hit 12 there and now you can see where you have a basic displacement on the plane and we have you know, a, a node that covers that entire plane. 
all right so that's just something important to work to know when you're working with this kind of um, this kind of method and let's take a look at the hypershade for a second over here and you can see where the nodes are I've got my creator creator and we've got my blend now the next thing we want to do with this is is attach a displacement node so I'm going to choose displacement over in my hypershade I'm going to click on that node and there it is so we have this but we really need to connect this displacement node to the overall shading group so in this case I think the best way to go about this is to select the blend to go to graph and we're going to graph the input output connections that way we can see this this shading group node that otherwise we, we couldn't see if we didn't graph it so um, when I chose that my displacement node I, I created all uh, went away I, I don't know where it is over here there there it is no nope, that's our place 3d texture so it's sort of gone it's right here actually it shows up in the material section so I'm gonna middle mouse button drag and drop that back down into the work area and I'm gonna activate it by clicking on it and I want to middle mouse button drag and drop it onto this blend 2 SG and just connect it by default and you can see where the connections that it made um, that this displacement is on the overall shading network which is cool but we also want to take this crater one which is our you know actual information right here this this displacement information we want to take that crater one information and click on it middle mouse button drag and drop it on top of that displacement node as well and you can see where that makes another connection okay so that's typically how this shading network is set up and how the displacement node is used in that so now that we have that you want to make sure that you come over into your crater one and go ahead and click that this is alpha is luminance okay so by enabling alpha is luminance it's telling you know the render that this should be 3d topology or this will create our 3d you know terrain so I'm gonna go ahead and hit my render and I'm gonna bring the window over here and if all goes well you're gonna see something that looks like this well I'm gonna switch my my render settings I'm gonna click on my render settings there and I'm gonna set um, the quality up to something a little bigger so Okay, I'm just going to pause it there. That's most of what, mostly what we need to see, I think. Um, so let's give this a shot. There were some things in there that you don't need to do exactly the way he did it, uh, but I like that he showed it that way because the um, it, it shows you the node structure um, of the shading groups, and that's that's kind of nice. So, uh, but I will uh, expedite this a little bit and. Um, I'm not going to put the the crater on the color node the way he did. So um, he put that on the color node, and that was a uh, was that a 2D or was that a 3D? I think it was a 3D crater. Okay, so here's the uh, fiddlesticks. There we go. So there's the crater on the color node. And then he took the um, the placement node and sized that up, which you could just do interactively if you wanted to. So it's about the size of the square, um, or you can do it numerically if you like numeric. So that doesn't really need to be on your color node. In fact, you probably will want to color your ground with something other than this but um, it will need to be on your displacement node. Uh, the, the displacement, again, the black stays level and everything else goes up from there. So 100% white goes up to 100%. And like you said, we're gonna change channel one to white and channel two to about mid gray. And then channel three will be black. And I think he was just putting this on the color node so that you can easily visualize how this is going to look. The other um, technique that you saw first is really nice when you need a specific elevation map, and you have to, and you really need to 
decide where the the peaks and valleys are going to be rather than just having it be random. Uh, this way is easier, the other way has more control. Um, and there's a question about why did he make it a blend material? And I don't really know. Lambert is a better choice than Blinn for a ground plane in most cases. Um, I just uh, figure he probably, he might have had his reasons or maybe that he just did it randomly without really thinking about it. So, um, and you can always turn the shininess off on your Blinn anyway. <clears throat> so, if he had a reason, I don't know what it was. Uh, so we'll go to ground here, and then I'm going to do the graph network, is that right? Yep, so we can see the Lambert 2 shading group, that part we need. And I will go to the utilities, no, displacement, right here, and create a displacement node. And I'm going to break the connection to the displacement shader group and get that out of my window. And I am going to map the output on the displacement shaders by middle clicking into the input on Lambert 2 SG. That was just a middle click drag from the output to the input where it says displacement shader. And this out color. pull that off of ground. I'm going to try to keep it where you can see everything here if I can. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect the out color of crater 1, the crater shader, from the ground node so this image will disappear and it will become gray once again, and then I'll middle click on that out color node and put that into the I put it into the default input by control clicking. I think that worked. Let me find out. It won't show up in your preview no matter what you press it. You have to render it. Nope, okay, that didn't do anything. This part often is interesting. So, out color. To vector displacement, and then we got to make the luminance is alpha. is luminance. There we go. Oh, heck. No, of course it's not going to cooperate with me. Why would it? Out alpha, maybe? Let's try out alpha into the displacement node. I think that did it. Yeah, that did it. Probably a couple, that was a 2013 Maya video, so it's probably been a couple of changes since that version. So I'll, I'll show it one more time. I'm going to middle click on the out alpha node, and I'm going to draw the connection into the displacement node on the displacement shader. And then that displacement out goes into the displacement shader on the overall shading group. Okay, and then to reiterate, make sure you turn on alpha is luminance on the crater one. Okay, so um, the alpha gain will increase like the intensity of the displacement. So um, if I were to quick render here. Ground. Got 
gotta go back to the displacement. Gotta go back to the uh, hyper shade. Okay, so if I were to go to my crater node and increase the alpha gain on that, what's gonna happen is these mountains will get higher, the peaks will go up higher. So um, you can increase the intensity of that if you like. Now what you might want to do is um, after you get this set, I'm going to, I think that's maybe a tad too intense, so maybe somewhere around 1.3. After you get this all set, uh, what you're probably going to want to do is bake it, so to speak, or in other words, convert the displacement to polygons. So I'm going to click Modify. Let me do a Save As, because sometimes this crashes it. Save Scene As. We'll just call it Displacement. Displ. Modify. Convert. Displacement to polygons. And that will leave behind your old plane, which you can delete. Okay, and then you can you can actually smooth this if you want to. Um, sometimes it needs it. Like you, like the first guy showed it being smoothed. Sometimes it really needs a smooth, so that's gonna really pump up the polygons in this case. I think I had a lot of subdivisions. If I had a few less subdivisions, it wouldn't be as bad, but I'll just smooth it and add some, add some ground textures to it. And that's going to probably take a hot minute, so I am going to go to Okay, I think it just finished. It's going to smooth it by two degrees, um, or two iterations, or whatever. By default, I'm going to I'm going to bring that down a little bit, but let's see if I can find some Good seamless ground texture here. Oh, let's see. Open image and new tab. Does that work? Nope. Sometimes these these uh, Pinterest images are like stupid about letting you get into them. So. An image, a new tab. I'm trying to get to the full size image here. I'm getting 300 by 600 or something like that. Oh, gotta pay for that one. That's why I'm getting low resolutions. Let's find a free one. Save image as dried grass, and I'm going to go to my Maya folder projects. I'm actually on the rigging project still. I haven't changed, so go to the source images file uh, folder in your project folder. All your um, images that are input images go in the source images folder drop this division level down to one so it's not quite so crazy. That's all we should really need. I'm going to go to Lambert 1. This should be called Ground. No, it switched it to Lambert 1 because it does that when you do the baking, when you do the 
modify, convert, displacement to polygons. It just reapplies Lambert 1 for some goofy reason. Okay, so now it's ground. Okay, good. And I will go into the color node and go to file. Shade. We got to do a little bit of editing on this. Let's graph this network again. So the um, displacement shader is gone on the ground network now because we baked it. So um, you don't actually need that anymore. And I'm trying to get a look at the place 2D texture here. And I'm going to let this tile a little bit, so I'm going to take the size down on the uh, 2D texture a little bit. Place 2D texture, mirror UV to get its tile. And I should be having, I should be getting, okay, shaded display. Shaded display with texture maps. I guess it. Unless there's something I'm missing. Maybe I'm missing something. I'm trying to figure out why it's not showing me the grass image on my shaded display. It's going to be a long render when I put the uh, paint effects on it again. expect it to be this long. Maybe I should, I better take the smoothing off because I think it's the smoothing that's killing this render time. Poly smooth face. So I just deleted the poly smooth face node off there. Hopefully it's not quite as bad. to displace it again, is it? What is taking so long? It shouldn't be that bad. I'm going to delete the displacement shader just in case. That displacement shader might be trying to apply to the initial particles. Place 2D, place 3D. So that's it's not there. So 
Sorry, guys. I'm, I apologize. I am. I'm gonna try to render this one more time, and if it's still going too slow, I'll just move on. I think I'll just come back to that. Um, so you've got your terrain. Now I'm going to go to generate get brush. And I'll just put some some kind of grass on there. We can go with corn silk. Obviously that is pretty big, so I'm just going to scale it down. Yeah, so that field grass sways in the wind by default as soon as you drop it in there. It's already animated. That's That explains why I couldn't find the animate button. <laughs> um, let's go to trees and... Again, don't go overboard with this, but do use it uh, to your advantage. But if you go too crazy with it, first of all, your um, render times are going to go out of control. And second of all, it's really nothing to write home about that you... It's not like it's really anything special. If it were more of a main character in the front of the, um, you know, right by the action, or there was something important about it, you probably would want to model that tree by hand, so. so and they're just going to render black until you convert them to polygons. Convert paint effects to polygons, which is a good idea anyway, once you've got them the way you want them. Again, I would convert them to polygons. Let's make a sky dome. We're gonna let's switch to the Arnold renderer. And we'll make a sky dome. And then our render 
time is going to really go insane. physical sky and I'm going to give it a sky tint light blue color maybe a little lighter than that and there's the sun Obviously that's going to take a while to render. I'm going to crop out a little render area. Maybe turn up the intensity a little bit. And increasing the elevation changes where the, um, where the horizon line is. And the rest of these basically just tweak them until you get it looking the way you want it. There's a thing in here somewhere to show the camera gate so you can um, see the edges of the see the edges of where the camera will be, but of course I can't find it. So that's going to be rendering for quite a while because that's on high resolution and it's on Arnold. So still want to get that image on the ground plane, but I'll just come back to that later. Um, so that should help you to make a nifty environment. Like I said, the first thing that the first video that I played also shows a really good way to make a ground elevation where you have to have your peaks and valleys in specific places. Like you have to have it according to the way you have it, you know, some kind of plan that you have in mind. Uh, but if it can just be random, then this is the easier way to do it. Just have one of the procedural textures 
um, generate the, the elevation for you. So that's really about it. I'm going to let this render and we'll see what it looks like, but I think you get the idea for today. So if you have any questions, just type them into chat, or if you think of them later, email me. Okay, I always feel like I come up with more questions like while I'm working on my project in Maya. Oops. So I'll be sure to like write down what I come up with while I'm working on it this weekend. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I will. Awesome. I will make myself available as much as I can. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So have a good one. I'll see you guys later. All right. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.